Hi everyone, sorry about that if you were tuning in earlier. We had a few technical difficulties. Uh, we've sorted them out now, hopefully, but uh, if we haven't, we'll just try again. Uh, I'm Fire Samadhi. We're here at the end of day two of Spikes Asia with my colleagues from Campaign Asia. We've got Olivia Parker, Barbara Khan Javid, and Matthew Miller. Uh, another really quite action packed day. I'm going to let you kick off, Matt, because you've just come from uh, the finale presentation from Gigi Jubilee Gianni Ganani. Great. Right, so Gigi is a drag queen by night and a creative uh, person with Isobar in Hong Kong by day. And uh, I'm going to call her she for the purposes of this presentation because that is how she appeared to me. Okay. Uh, I've been bikes for a number of years, not forever, but I am reasonably sure this was probably the first uh, presentation that started with a five minute dance number by a person with, you know, three foot long blonde tresses and eight inch tall purple platform boots. And it was fabulous, it was awesome. I couldn't pull that off. So, yeah. She went around the whole crowd and she had got everybody, uh, you know, definitely paying attention uh, or looking frightened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, she also had a, uh, quite a serious message for the industry, and I thought it was I thought it was really good. She talked a lot about you know the meaning behind drag and what drag is all about. So being a drag queen is about subverting expectations and subverting norms about identity and gender and you know, what makes a good performance or fashion and all, all those things. And, and what she wanted people in the audience to recognize is that if you really want diversity in agencies and you really want, you know, to, to have a diverse staff that drives creativity that can reach people, you can't do that by hiring according to what they call cultural fit. Because cultural fit, which we do hear agencies talk about quite a lot, is just kind of like a code word for normal. And whatever normal is for that particular agency or group, and so she was arguing that people need to hire the people who frighten them a little bit, the people who they think will keep them up at night, and in short, pardon her language, the people who are gonna fuck shit up and, and, and shake things up, and, that, and that, that's a good thing that the industry needs more of. Absolutely. And a very simple message, very powerful. You hear lots of agencies, and I'm, I'm not having a go, I'm just saying you hear lots of people, not agencies, companies generally, who talk about how proud they are of their culture and that they have a good cultural fit, and like, it's always been, something that I guess as a norm you want to promote as a positive, right? You're like, yeah, we have this culture and it's ours. And it's really great to hear someone make you turn that on your head and go, actually, that's, look at it from the other side, that's quite exclusive. And that's what's holding the industry, or any industry, certainly this one, back by going, right, we'll try and make you fit our parameters, however wide we think they are, they are still parameters you're putting on your, yeah. on your brand. I, on your I don't company. think that she was saying it was like, you know, agencies are evil. No, it was no. more like, this is an unconscious process yeah. that goes on. Where people gravitate towards people that are like them for whatever in, in you know many ways, but it ends up excluding people who you know perhaps have more to bring to the table than you might think. Because about how she can subvert a whole number of different norms: sex, gender, language, head, dress, culture. Yes. She can kind of subvert everything all in one go. Yeah. And her, her best line was that if there was a guy named Norm here, she'd subvert him as well. Which I it's, <laughs> it's, it's nice to have like. An effective but serious message for the industry, uh, being you know really spearheaded by yeah, this incredible, absolutely. incredible person. And yeah. like more power to them. I really enjoyed uh, the, the, what I saw of uh, her dance at the beginning, the performance. It was great. We're wondering if we could. <laughs> She's right up there. Say hi. Oh. Hi. What's happening here? We're just talking about you. Oh, yeah. We're just live on Campaign Asia for Facebook Live. We're oh, just hi. talking about your presentation and how much you okay. enjoyed it. Did you like it? Yeah. Very very good. Good. Um, did, did, I, did I get all my words right, my lip sync? <laughs> I believe so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Uh, How are you guys doing? How's your night going? Yeah, it's so, well, well, you know, Party started right now. Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, I have to go look around from someone. No problem. Probably back, okay? Thanks very much. Highlight. This is live right now? It is, it is. Highlight, yay! Over here. <laughs> Give your Instagram. Give <laughs> your Instagram. Oh, yeah, follow me. At gg.jubilee. G-I-U-B-I-L-E-E. Yay! Thank you very much. I'll just follow us. <laughs> there, 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 there. there we are. Great. Great. Fantastic. Good. I love this live stream. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was about to say, yeah, we should scrap everything else we're going to talk about, but uh, catch up after you, uh, Olivia, to, 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 to you know, bring it up. Yeah, but yeah. AI, you were in Bala Bala. Yeah, you and Bala are a lot of AI panels today, right? A lot of AI panels. We don't have any visuals for AI. Yeah, we have, yeah, sadly, there's a whole group of AI, but I think one thing I did think today is that. We asked a lot of people in our video, we did a kind of video tour of the, of the floor today and asked everyone, is AI overhyped? And the message just from general delegates is that no, it's not overhyped. And we a lot about AI, perhaps to the extent that it's, you know, maybe we feel like we've heard it over and over again, but people are really excited about it. And uh, I spoke to um, Rohan 
life at a bicycle bar. Yeah, quite interesting point. He said that I think people overestimate technology in the short term and underestimate what it can do in the long term. So he actually thinks the really exciting part of stuff from AI is still way in the future. It's still five years away or something. Um, even though a lot of people here seem to be using it already, there was one panel um, that we sat in on where with Facebook, uh, with Adobe, with Manny Life, and they all talked about how they're using AI as brands every day. And yeah, I think they had some. Well, the, their, their main point at the end was they were just fearful that singularity will take over and that may, may lead to a not, a, not necessarily a terminate, terminator judgment day scenario, but from the brand's perspective that it takes over people's jobs and their roles and all that. And what is missing from that conversation was that they should take an implement something called blockchain that will allow that system to know what is right and what is wrong. And as the blockchain gets stronger and stronger, using the AI, using machine learning, and everything else that's part of it, you can actually prevent any of the apocalyptic world-ending scenarios that they talk about. The reason agencies and brands don't do that, as per my discussions with them, is because there's a lot of latency initially with blockchain, and the brands, and right now agencies cannot afford any latency at all. There's a lot of talk about AI, but when you talk about you know, fear of AI, there's not enough investment in terms of preventing it. Right. So prevention versus cure, it's that conversation. Yeah. Which they're not yeah. really trying to have. Prevention probably takes too much time exactly. for an agency to exactly. judge it in time exactly. right now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And agencies are not really doing well financially right now, as we've seen the quarterly results of the biggest agencies right now, definitely be a great example uh, as a group. And they just can't afford or even make the case for having any level of latency in their campaigns or in their technology. That's my right <laughs> today. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, we can call that alone. Yeah, well, but, but potentially, yeah, 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 instead of expanding the conversation. Well, well, if, if, you're, if you're a shareholder a holder of those companies, then you're, it's, a, it's a high for you. But hey, they're not investing in latency. Yeah. So, depends how you look at it. Yeah. Well, I came in on the last bit where they were talking about the stuff that I know about, which is like driverless cars in the future and connectivity. And yeah. That all sounds fine to me. I can't wait for the day where yeah. I can just kick back. Actually, um, Scott at Drive by the G. The only person who brought up security in terms of okay. AI today, and he uh, showed us the Chrysler example where they, they set up this thing where like a driver was driving the car and they hacked into it and they showed how it was hard to be driven into the ditch. <laughs> and he was like, Yeah, there's actually a lot of security issues with AI. Yeah, well, no one wants to talk much about that today. No one really wants to spotlight the uh, the obvious flaws, right? When you're trying to talk about its exciting possibilities. But yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, it sounds like there was a lot of learning to be had, right? Yeah. On AI, which uh, yeah. I, I'm sad I had to miss out on something because you guys are there. But moving on to more tech, I believe. Yeah. In terms okay. of, uh, sure. You and I believe yeah. uh, the lady. I can't remember her name. I'll, 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 I'll let me inform you. Please. I, this morning I got to attend, uh, or afternoon I guess, lunchtime a session uh, hosted by PhD, uh, which uh, they featured Moon Rebus, who you can probably Google. Um, she's an artist um, who has implanted in her body uh, a sensor. She calls herself an elective cyborg. So she has in her foot basically a, uh, a device that's connected to the worldwide network of seismographs. So whenever there's an earthquake or a tremor or somewhere, she feels it as a vibration in her body. Wow. And so, yeah, it sounds a bit out there, and it, it is, certainly, but there is a small yet growing number of around the world who are experimenting with this kind of you know cyborg stuff like implanting stuff into their body and so her point of view she came at it you know as an artist from a creative point of view saying that this experience of like basically integrating a new sense into her brain it, you know it sort of broadened her perspective and it gave her a different kind of view of the world and the earth so she feels like more connected to it so it really changed you know her thought pattern and her and her perspective on things. And she said that it, it, you know, in the end it makes her feel more human rather than less human, which is something that you might think, like if you're yeah. becoming part robot, you're less human, but actually she said it enhanced, you know, her humanity. So, interesting discussion, what the hell does it have to do with marketing? So, um, we, took, we spoke with uh, Chris Stevenson of PhD about that, and his take was, A, this cyborg sort of revolution is, is coming and it will impact creativity, you know, and sort of like, the, you know, the. Uh, the raw materials of culture and, and creative work in a big way and then secondly things will in a media sense or a media consumption sense more and more uh, you know screens will be integrated into the body we can already see that sort of with augmented reality you know providing a different view of what's happening in the world and once we bring that internal to our bodies that's a whole different ballgame and so you know 
he admits that it's it's something that's happening in the future, but it's definitely something that the industry needs to take uh, you know take a good look at and pay attention to, keep tabs on. That's it. Do you think that yeah, any sort of however maybe out there it sounds right now, anything that's going to be a paradigm shift like elective cyborgs and these yeah. technologies that this lady has within her get better and can do more things and more people are using them. Like it's like with anything, right? It's going to be really out there and difficult for. In our example, advertising marketing to get grasp of, but as it becomes more part of society and you're just going to have to accept yeah. that you need to do it, then like that's going to drive creativity, right? Because no one's been there, which is quite nice because we hear a lot about creativity of derived ideas. We had a great question session earlier yesterday where we went around talking to people about kind of inspiration and copying, where's the line? Whereas yep. with something like this, there is no copying or drawing inspiration to some degree because it's totally brand new, right? Like, you know, and so I think that could be very exciting. I don't know. I mean, it feeds into a bit to what I was then going to talk about, which is my most exciting thing that I went to today and what you were talking about um, around almost the passivity of having the future with all this new technology and new ways of connecting with people. Um, my panel was uh, put on together with uh, Unruly and the Foresight for Foundry um, uh, to do with like the end of video advertising as we know it. And you know, it's a very dramatic title. And, they did make the point though that look, with these new technologies that are coming together, particularly IoT wearables, like we're going to be way less dependent on screens than we are right now. Everyone's talking about video, and video streaming, and we're doing one right now, and that's great. But like you know, in like ten years, and when everyone's like connected from their you know their car to their house to their phone to their whatever's in their head, like the screen is not going to be the main source of advertising or consumption anymore. And so they were saying there are opportunities. Like the screen's not going. And advertisers need to start looking further ahead and going, no, sort of putting their heads in the sand. This is coming, right? You know, the Unruly unveiled their connected home earlier this year at Cannes and how it's all going to work and how brands can get involved with that. And Ian Forrester, who is the SVP of Insight globally, was talking about, you know, you just have to redefine the boundaries of when you can connect with consumers. But most consumers are very open to being talked to by brands in their home. It just has to be in the right context, the right level of technology, the right level of control. And it was just very interesting to hear people talking about these sort of next levels of advertising, but they're really not that far away, you know. And uh, yeah, and uh, Maeve Query, hope I haven't butchered her name, from uh, from the Foundry was talking about, you know, the idea of how things change really when you have hearables, you know. And uh, she specifically talked about the example of one day we will have an earbud that translates everything perfectly for us in any language immediately as we're walking around. Like, what does that mean for brands? Like, that's super passive, but highly influential and highly engaging. So, you need to start thinking about this stuff now because you don't want to be caught cold by it. And I mean, yeah, the time frame is always a thing. You sound like such a marketer or an agency person. When am I gonna? When am I gonna be ready? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they were more just like it's gonna be next decade or so. This stuff certainly connected home and IoT, right? I wouldn't be wrong with that, right? You know, like that's that's what people are talking about. You already have smart TVs and smart mirrors, and it won't be long before she was suggesting that you know we're not too far away from your shaving in the mirror and uh, your mirror tells you that you've run out of razor blades and you're like great I'll get some new ones and then the mirror goes hey actually X brand has a deal right now I know you're with Y brand but and then it'll come up in your mirror as a video and you're saying right show me the product and you go right excellent and I'll make it happen and that's not you know we're way beyond minority report sorry I had to bring it up but um, you know the reality, guys, the reality yeah. is that that kind of technology already does exist. Yeah, 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 the problem yeah. is that if the demand of it isn't at that scale where they can justify the cost reduction yeah so right now anyone who has it like Google Glass someone brought up today Google Glass is a failure well actually it's not from an enterprise level it wasn't a failure yeah. there's they're pricing it the same it's just the application of it is very different we even did a story on this I was very surprised to hear an agency person call Google Glass a failure from a B2C perspective maybe but a B2B maybe it's working maybe what you're talking Maybe it doesn't work on B2C, it could work on B2B. And then more money's on B2B. Absolutely, but also it's what you were saying. It's about she was saying, more brands, get in now, get in on the ground floor. Be the person who wants to be the first person who uses this technology to get me that offer. And that's like a position no one else can take from you. And it's not this pie in the sky anything. For all those video advertisers out there, they weren't saying it's all over. They're just saying, like, be prepared for there to be, like, you're kind of top of the tree right now, but that technology moves yeah. super fast. And that's good to Right, well I think that's enough from all of us, um, my beard game, so um, we're going to go on to the party again, but thanks very much for tuning in, uh, and we'll, do, uh, we'll, see, we'll see you all tomorrow, so yep. cheers guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.